I'm going to talk to you about binding energy now, which is something that, uh, well, it relates to the only equation you get to have on your, uh, in your data booklet. So that's going to be relating to this equation, E equals MC squared. So the very first thing is to understand what binding energy really means. So, I mean, we'll start with the definition. So binding energy is the energy that's released when, uh, let's say, when uh, a nucleus is assembled. from its constituent parts. That's usually a sort of textbook type uh, definition. I'll explain what that means here. Okay, so what this means is that if you're going to assemble a nucleus, which means you're going to, remember when you're, um, when you're in the process of having radioactive decay, you have one element, you know, or one atom becoming a new atom. Now, when that happens, um, you actually have to make a new atom. And plus, you get other stuff like alpha particles and beta and neutrinos and stuff. But it turns out, in order to make that new particle, you actually release energy. So energy actually comes out when you make a new particle. And that's really what this talks about here. Now, the binding energy itself, uh, this is actually pretty interesting. When you're looking at... Um, when you're looking at a decay equation like we were just doing before with you know you have a left hand side and the right hand side of this sort of decay equation uh, the mass of the left hand side I should just say yeah mass of the left side is not equal to the mass of the right hand side there's something missing. In fact, when you look, you know, if you're looking at one of these decay equations and you actually measure the mass of the left-hand side and then the mass of all the different stuff on the right-hand side, the masses won't exactly even out. There's going to be a very slight amount of mass missing. Now this missing mass, by the way, this left-hand side mass is going to be greater than the right-hand side mass. Uh, in these types of decay equations like we were looking at before. So what that means is that the missing mass, this is the key thing here, the missing mass is called the mass defect. So this mass that you don't really see around there, that's called the mass defect. Okay, that's the key thing here. So there's going to be some mass missing. We call it mass defect. So then we're ready for this uh, equation now, which is E equals MC squared. So many people know the equation, and yet so few people actually know what it's used for. All right, so this is time to actually do it. So here we go. This is E equals MC squared. All right, because people say, oh, Einstein, oh, E equals MC squared. Like, yeah, but what does that mean? And Einstein was very clever, clearly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what this actually means here. E is going to be the binding energy. In other words, the energy released. Now this binding energy is going to be measured, it can be measured in joules, but more often it's actually measured in mega electron volts. Remember, 1 eV equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Just in case you want to convert and by the way, you just have to do this times a million, right? Because you have mega. Mega means 10 to the 6. That's a million. So that's the E is the binding energy. M is the mass defect. And you might think that that should be measured in kilograms, but actually a more useful thing is to measure it in U. So let's talk about this, actually. So 1 U... That's actually called, uh, sometimes it's called a unified mass unit or atomic mass unit. But what this is, it's actually one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. You see, particle physicists and nuclear physicists were wanting to get some sort of standard value to use for mass. So they decided, let's use, let's use carbon-12. 
um, and let's take one twelfth of its mass, so that because it has twelve of these units. So in any case, one U has a really useful unit. Unit, huh? But uh, if you look at your data booklet near the first page, um, you have this right here. This might seem like a really stupid thing. A lot of people ignore this value right here. But I think this is really important and it really saves you a lot of time. Because you see, when a lot of students calculate this uh, stuff, um, they convert the energy to joules, then they work out some stuff, then they convert back and forth. It gets really annoying to convert things. And there's a reason why we use this. You'll see that in an example coming up. By the way, C, that's the speed of light in a vacuum, of course. Uh, and that is actually 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. However, if you're going to do this and actually work with these kinds of questions with binding energy, what really helps is, well, first of all, they almost always want things in MeV, in other words, mega electron volts. So the key here is calculate your mass in U, in other words, these uh, unified mass units. And the reason we do that is because 1U is equal to this right here. And you'll see why that is in a second here. But if I take this, if I wanted to put in U here, MeV over C squared, what that does is it's going to, it's a type of unit that's going to cancel out the C squared. So you won't even need to calculate and even work with this number. You won't even need to bother with that. So in the next video, I'm going to show you an example where we actually work with this. You'll see how straightforward it is and how this unit of U equals 931.5 MeV per C squared really comes to save the day.